So in this video, I just want to try to uh, explain how the um, my new uh, phased vertical beam array actually works. So trying to keep it really, really simple. So these two points are the feed point of the antenna. So this is where I'd be connecting my coax. So this would be one side of the transmission line, and this will be the other side of the transmission line. So, you know, if it was just one wire going either way, that would be like a centerfed dipole there, except the difference is this one turns down 90 degrees and this one turns down 90 degrees. Um, and of course, there's two instead of one per side. Okay. Now, the uh, this isn't drawn very well. It's uh, It depends on how you imagine it, but looking down on it it would actually be a perfect x okay so it's a perfect square um from the end so the distance from here to here is a half of a wavelength in free space as is the distance from here to here as is from here to here as is from here to here now of course being these both being on opposite sides of the feed line they're 180 degrees out of phase so when current is being delivered this way on this one, current is being taken in this way on this one. So from a side view here, it would appear, you know, we'd have coherent current going back and forth like on a horizontal dipole. But if you imagine that back and forth, we've now, uh, when we look at the vertical component, when we have an up, when this one's coming down. So these two are alternating just like on a balanced feed line, the two uh, currents, are one's up, one down at any given time. So from this viewpoint, we're seeing a down phase with an up phase and vice versa. So we're not actually getting any coherent signal in this direction just from that fact alone. Even if this was just one element here and one element here instead of doubling off like this. Now, um, the other, other thing is um, the... The fact that there's two, well, this is this is also a half wave apart. They're both in the same phase on the same side, but because they're half a wave apart, um, when uh, this one ra is radiating and then this one's radiating at in the same phase, by the time the signal gets from, let's say, this one to this one, well, this is in the opposite phase, and same from that to this. So even so, this relationship as well also cancels radiation off to the sides. So we've got these two factors. We've got these two, you know, being opposed, but we've also got these running together, but being opposed by their spacing of half a wavelength. So we have an extra cancellation for side on radiation. And of course the same with this side. Now from here to here with them being at opposite phase, this is a half a wavelength. So uh, when this is, let's say, zero degrees, and this is 180, by the time that wavefront from the 180 makes it here, this is no longer zero, it's 180 as well. So we have a coherence in this direction, and it would also be in the other direction. Uh, so we have a significant null at either side, and we would have a very uh, sharp uh, bi-directional, uh, you know, dual lobe sort of set up. So to turn it into a beam, what I've then done is I've added some parasitic um, elements, radiators. Now, the three there, it's a bit hard to see, but there's the, the closest one. This one is, is uh, just a fraction over a half wavelength long, and it's not connected to anything, it's floating. And its position is determined by an exact half wave in free space from this radiator here. Sorry, I'll try and stay stable here. This vertical radiator and this vertical radiator. So the first one is exactly a half wave from here and a half wave from here, right? But, of course, it doesn't work out to be any neat multiple of that when it comes to its relationship with this one and this one. So that throws things out uh, in that coherence. Without the other two there, when it's just this one, it does make a significant null at the end but we do get some sort of um, back sort of sharp lobes out that way. So to eliminate that, I've added another one out here and another one out here. And so on this one, on the far side, 
it is measured to be exactly half a wavelength from only this one. And a different length from that. And this one on this side is measured to be a half a wavelength away from only this one. Now having these three in place ha has actually really minimized even those backward sort of side angles that it had. So it's got significant cancellation all around and which forces more into the front vertical lobe. Now there is a very small um, horizontal component off the sides but it's really not very strong at all and it's it's probably more so uh, you know off the back sides anyway which I've been working on so it's very 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 slight so all in all that's fantastic so now looking directly down on the system so this is the uh, lines that run to let's say the two front vertical elements and this is the lines that run to the two rear vertical elements and so the spacing, as you can see, between the two front vertical elements, there's a half wave space between the two sides. So front, front right and, and rear right, there's a half wave spacing. And same on the other side. Now, um, the reflectors or parasitic uh, radiators at the back, the furthest back one in the center is measured to be exactly a half wave length from both of these rear elements. And then there's one over this side that is actually exactly a half wave with this one, but not that. And this one's exactly a half wave with this one, but not that. And this is enough to create a little bit of a complication here and uh, basically a lack of coherence. It's not terrible. And, uh, and of course, any lack of coherence by the time it gets here is actually more, less significant because of the distance traveled. But it does actually just make the RF go, hang on a minute, bugger it, I'm going that way. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, and it's a very low impedance path for it to go out that way. So, um, so that's the, the basic working principle. So, uh, double whammy on side cancellation. These two being out of phase is a side cancellation. But also, this behind this and this behind this, this being in phase and with in phase with that and this being in phase with that again uh, anything getting from here to here by the time this is that's gotten here this is in the other phase so again a phase cancellation so there's that phase cancellation consideration from that perspective and also um, from the uh, alternating perspective each side there so the high front and back lobe the strong lobe uh, becomes a strong front lobe because of this little trick played at the rear. So I hope that makes sense. Oh, the uh, measurements now. The um, as for matching and getting the system to be a nice S3R and all that nice a nicely timed system. Um, it has worked out as planned. I haven't had to make any adjustments. So the the basic uh, story here, as I think I've got marked here, is four elements direct to coax. Each element is three quarter wave okay so basically that from there to there is a three quarter wave and from here to here is a three quarter wave here to here is a three quarter wave and here to here is a three quarter wave and so that allows a system timing that gives us a really good um sort of uh <laughs> phase angle on the reflections to give us a good match to 50 ohm so that's a really nicely timed system as a low impedance system. So, um, yeah, 7-3, uh, and thanks for watching.